Good afternoon, dear stakeholders. Welcome you all to the H1 for 2019 Earning Disclosure of Fragment Limited. It's my privilege once again to be here, and uh, this transmission is now going live to our webcast link as well as uh, in our Facebook page. It's been a lovely first half of 2019 for the bank, and to know more about the financial details, how we have done, I'd request my colleague, Deputy Managing Director and CFO of the bank, Mr. Havi Gurahman Chaudhry, to give the details. And right before that, I would like to just introduce my rest of the colleagues present here today, who are part of this fantastic senior management. Team. Uh, I have Mr. Gulam Rabbani, who is the Deputy Managing Director and also the Head of Special Asset Management Team and Legal. Mr. Tawheed Ulalam Khan, Deputy Managing Director and Head of Commercial Banking. The new inclusion uh, in this quarter, uh, Mr. Faisal Rahman, uh, Deputy Managing Director and Head of Corporate and Institutional Banking. Uh, Mr. Ma A. N. M. Mahfouz, Head of Consumer Banking, Mr. Shams Mohammed, who is also heading the Transaction Banking and Structured Finance, Mr. Mabu Rahman, the Head of Treasury, Mr. Rafai, uh, the Head of Credit Risk Management, Ibnul, who is heading the Small ICC. Over to Habib uh, for the financial results. Thank you, so much, Mr. Good night, Mr. Dweet, for our booking statements. This is nothing but uh, sort of disclosures, uh, disclosures from banks firm. Uh, we understand the viewers who cannot read this out and take into consideration before making any kind of investment or other sort of decisions based on this earnings disclosure. Uh, about prime bank and its group structure, uh, as you know, Prime Bank has started its couple journey in the year 1995, and we have five fully owned subsidiaries. We have 14 outside the country, three overseas subsidiaries, and two local subsidiaries. Uh, we have presence in Singapore, as you know, in the United Kingdom and in Hong Kong, and two local subsidiaries are Prime Bank Investment Limited. Uh, and Prime Bank Securities Limited. Prime Bank Securities Limited is uh, trade-holders of both the birthdays uh, in the country, Dhaka Stock Exchange and Chittagong Stock Exchange. Uh, and about the business, Prime Bank uh, provides conventional banking services as well as Islamic banking services. And we have offshore banking unit too. Uh, Prime Bank is not only focused on its, its commercial venture, uh, it has a, a full commitment on its uh, corporate social responsibilities. And, and with that objective, Prime Bank uh, created a foundation named Prime Bank Foundation. Uh, and this Prime Bank Foundation is actively working in the uh, health sector, addiction sector, and the sports sector in Bangladesh. Uh, we have Prime Bank Eye Hospital and Prime Bank College of Nursing. Uh, to, to give you an idea about the magnitude of the presence of these uh, two, two massive institutions, uh, in, in this half year 2019, in Prime Bank Hospital, Eye Hospital, uh, more than 80,000 patients uh, get examined and, and almost 600 plus surgery performed uh, in, in this half year. And uh, Prime Bank College of Nursing, uh, current number of students is uh, around 253. Uh, and you know, on education sector, we have two English medium schools where uh, total number of students is 541. Uh, and we have education support program also. Uh, we do provide a scholarship uh, to under privileged for meritorious students. And as you know, Bangladesh is a cricket uh, loving nation. Uh, we have very strong presence on, on, on this side also. Uh, you know, in Bangladesh, uh, school cricket is very popular, and Prime Bank is sole sponsor of national school, school cricket tournament. 
on financial side uh, net interest income in age one 19 has gone up by 13 percent from 893 to uh, 1011 per crore. Uh, interest expense has gone up by 10 percent and net interest income has gone up by 18 percent. Uh, and this has been possible because uh, the, the even advance uh, has gone up by 0.48 percent. And most importantly, cost of liquidity—that's that's the key in this challenging banking environment. Uh, it has come down. Cost of liquidity of prime bank has come down by 0.04 percent. Uh, and I must give credit to our elbow that where if you, if you go through the uh, pure bank's cost of liquidity, uh, that's much more higher than what we have achieved for percent, one percent. And that has been possible over the years because of uh, the efficient uh, algo process we have in this in this bank. Uh, in one side, uh, we have need, we have not offered really uh, high interest rate in the market, but on, on, the, on the other side, uh, uh, we have been able to manage our position very liquid. If you go through this KD ratio, uh, uh, we have 81.35 percent KD ratio. Uh, at the end of June uh, 19, uh, where regulatory limit is 85 percent, and, and when industry is, is, is struggling, kind of maintaining its liquidity, uh, from here it is very clearly uh, uh, demonstrated that our uh, we, we have been able to maintain very good liquid positions. Uh, the investment income has gone up by one percent. And commission exchange and brokerage has gone up by 6%. Other operating income has come down uh, by 9%. This is basically uh, uh, adjustment of operating income versus uh, other operating expense. Uh, total operating income has gone up by around 11%. And operating expense has come down by 2%. This is one of the key area I think. Uh, we have done pretty really well where industry is struggling to arrest or control their expenses. Prime Bank has been uh, successfully uh, doing it uh, in the last couple of years. And this year we have been able to arrest the upper trend of operating expense. And in fact, it has come down by 6 to 2%. Uh, so, all these things has, has been resulted into our operating profit. Uh, you are, you are seeing that it's 29% growth you are seeing in operating profit. Uh, whether this operating profit is sustainable or not, or what is our momentum, uh, if you go through our operating profit trend starting from 2014, 15, 16, 17, it was a downturn. 18 is the year when we have been able to make a new turn, I mean upward turn in 2018. Uh, it was 537 crore in 2017, uh, then in 18, 572 crore. Now, whether we will be able to maintain this upward trend in 2019, that is also uh, clearly shown in this uh, half year result where uh, operating profit has gone up by uh, around 28 percent from 257 crore to uh, 332 crore. Whether this, this, this operating profit will be sustainable or not, uh, at the uh, right side I have shown you in two lines, uh, uh, you, you see that every month we have been able to beat last year's, uh, last month, uh, uh, last year's operating profit. So it clearly shows that uh, we will be able to maintain this upward trend of operating profit in 2019 also. Uh, Debt charts, uh, it was 99 crore for, uh, for half year 2018. Now it is 92 crore. Uh, as you know, Prime Bank uh, was going through a consolidation phase and uh, made significant amount of provision in the last couple of years. Uh, it was, uh, if you go through 2017, 16, and 15, uh, it was something around 300 to 400 crore raise. In, in, 2000, in the year 2018, we made something around 178 crore. So, 
This is kind of neo normal for private bank in terms of uh, rate charge. Uh, tax has gone up uh, in this half year 2019, uh, starting from 80 crore to 141 crore. And that's because uh, last year we had some return of loan in this uh, half, half year time. And as you understand, the uh, uh, tax uh, return of loan is allowable. Uh, uh, expense uh, from tax point of view. Uh, now, most important thing is net profit after tax. I just want to add one comment here uh, to what Habib has mentioned on CFO. It's the uh, operating profit trend, if you look at it the last five years, we had a bit of slowdown during 2014 onwards. So I just want to make a point here to all of the stakeholders who have closely been following our results and our uh, movement as a bank over the last five years. We have been mentioning and we have been exhibiting all the hard work and labor that has put in uh, by the board, by the management, and by all the members of the prime bank family in terms of reconfiguring the business model and the operating model of the bank. Uh, it, I had repeatedly mentioned in my earlier uh, comments, in, even in the last quarter uh, disclosure as well, that for the three years at a row, 15, 16, and 17, we were a little inward looking. Uh, it's not that we were not outward looking, but we were a little inward looking in kind of getting our housing order because it was a mammoth kind of a task for a bank of our size 146 branches, distribution, etc., and reconfiguring the business model. So it's not that the business dropped, it was a deliberate attempt, it was a deliberate thing that we did. We slowed down our business uh, growth, and rather we were consolidating ourselves and looking at all those verticals that we were working on. And 18 onwards, which we say in our earlier statement as well, is that we have just started reaping the benefits. Now onwards, as Habib was mentioning, that things have become new normal for uh, Prime Bank. So what you will see from now onwards, I mean 18 onwards, quarter to quarter, as well as he has shown in the right side card, that on a monthly basis we are meeting the numbers as we have done in 2018. And that's only been possible by the consolidation, by the reconfiguration, and by the changes that we have made in our way of doing business in the last, uh, in the previous three years. Absolutely. Uh, so MPT has gone up by 29% on solid basis and 28% on consumer basis. And you understand that this is a challenging time you're crossing. Uh, so we clearly understand how important the managing uh, balance sheet uh, uh, in, in this challenging environment and, and uh, inshallah the prime bank uh, with the support of the board and management, we have been able to manage our balance sheet very efficiently this time. Uh, so key, key performance or earnings per share on solid basis has gone up by 29% and on consolidated basis 28%. Uh, if you look up for, if you look uh, look up for these uh, uh, key indicators like return on asset, which has been gone up by uh, 28%. Percent return on equity has gone up by 22 percent, and net asset value per share has gone up by 4 percent. And only what already mentioned that or we have been able to adjust our operating expense, which has been clearly reflected in, in cost income ratio. Uh, yeah. Based on 2018, cost income ratio was 58.96 uh, percent. Now, based on 2019, it has come down to uh, 52 percent. On balance sheet side, uh, on deposit book, uh, June 2019, our deposit book is uh, 20,888 crore. Uh, if you go through the last couple of years, between 15, again, 16, 17, and 18, uh, this, is the, this is the first year when we have been able to close that uh, 20,000 mark. Uh, and and uh, so 2000, uh, December 2018, uh, we have been able to grow our deposit book by 
46 crore. And our CASA ratio is 32%. We all understand the, uh, uh, we have to increase this CASA. And our key focus is the bank. How can we increase this CASA? We understand that we need to provide immediate kind of banking services. Uh, uh, we need to provide uh, uh, all kind of banking services uh, to, our, to our customers to increase this CASA. And if with that in mind, the bank is uh, kind of uh, building its capacity in every form, the take form, then uh, human capital, uh, processing, engineering, and when we'll be able to uh, do our uh, this kind of jobs efficiently, I think we'll be able to uh, mobilize more jobs and cost percentages will be increasing in the future, I think, in the long run. Uh, on loans and advance, uh, our current loans and advance size is. 1,589 crore. Uh, the growth rate is down 5%. Uh, and we uh, discussed earlier, uh, we explained earlier that uh, Prime Bank is focusing on uh, very quality growth instead of you know quantity quantity growth. Uh, and, and that's why we will not be uh, growing our lending group very aggressively. Uh, uh, we will be uh, we try to grow this group very cautiously. Uh, and NPL uh, 2018 was 6.16%, which has uh, come down slightly uh, to 6.07%. And if you see the NPL coverage ratio, this was 65% before, now that has been increased to uh, 71%. Uh, on return of loan, as we mentioned before, the Prime Bank has gone through a consolidation process uh, and, and the reflection is here also. Uh, our total return of uh, uh, loan book size is uh, accumulated, the return of loan is 2426 crore. Uh, but after uh, if you deduct waiver or cash recovery during this time, the net recovery uh, return of loan is 2100. 72 crore. Uh, and in this half year 2019, we have been able to recover around 26 crore, which was 27 crore in the whole 2018. This is one of our uh, priority area, uh, and, and, and we are putting special focus on, on this area. Now, I'll be touching uh, our business segments a bit. We uh, did go. Uh, we have grown around 6% at the bank level uh, and, and uh, in all the segments, uh, CNIB has grown by 10%, CPT has grown by 4%, MSP has grown by uh, 6% and Kandima has grown by 2%. The good thing here is that uh, uh, almost 65% plus of total deposit group is coming from consumer business, I mean retail business. As you understand that, uh, retail deposit is more sticky, so we are not very much focusing on uh, what kind of deposit, corporate deposit, or focus on consumer side. And 65% um, plus consumer deposit is 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 quite poor amount of deposit, and we are focusing this area. How can we improve our consumer deposit more and more in the future? Can I just add to what you say? With regards to deposits. I mean, we also want to take a bit of pride that in today's market, I mean, if you look at the uh, perspective of today's market where there is a bit of a liquidity strain ongoing for the last about more than a couple of quarters now, uh, if you, if, as we mentioned in our earlier, earlier slide, that in the last six months, the bank had grown by almost about 1138 crore uh, in terms of deposits. The point that I want to stress here is what uh, we just mentioned a while back that our alpha management has been extremely uh, good where our peers have been offering uh, rates little more than us uh, and though they were marginally higher than us our customers who have been loyal with us uh, for the reasons of our the confidence that they have uh, on prime bank they have been renewing their deposits with us not only renewing their deposits but we also could get Incremental deposits of 11, 
love and thunder with Vicky Crow. So that kind of gives us the boost and that gives us the confidence that Prime Bank uh, is a dependable name in today's market and the consumers and the institutional depos depositors will continue with that level of confidence with Prime Bank. Because in today's banking world where large players as we see in global context to them are facing troubles, confidence from the depositor side is going to be a key strength area and we believe that Prime Bank with the 24 years past history have proven it once again that we are one of the most dependable things for the depositors to keep the money. Again, our lending book, Prime uh, Bank Growth is 5%. Uh, and then CNIP, CBDP, NSCB, all the signal has contributed to this growth. Uh, CNIB has grown by 5%, CBD by 7%, and NSB by 4%. Uh, on consumer side, I think uh, there's a slight degrowth of insertion, and uh, that's, that's because of, uh, I think, intensive competition in terms of pricing. And uh, we are taking a, kind of a different strategy than what the market is taking at the moment on consumer because so we believe that, you know, at a very Low, low interest rate, backed by very really high interest, um, uh, cost of deposit doesn't make any sense. So, a slight growth on the consumer side, but otherwise, uh, I, th I think 5% growth is okay. As you know, uh, today, uh, Central Bank has uh, uh, declared NPS uh, for, 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 uh, for the year, and they have also revised down this loan center fund growth from 16.5% to uh, 40.8%. Uh, again, what I'm saying is that time point objective is to focus on very much on quality deposits. Uh, so, so, and, and this 5% quality deposits would be a final thing. Can I just add a yeah. comment to what yes. uh, you just mentioned? I mean, overall, uh, if you look at the number of percentile growth. Uh, half year to half year basis, uh, corresponding year to this year. 5% may look a little paltry, but to be very honest, uh, this has been a deliberate and conscious strategy taken by the bank. I mean, uh, with the guidance from the board as well as uh, from the management, we believe that under the current uh, climate, it is more of a consolidation in terms of uh, loans and advances which is required, and more of recovery of legacy uh, NPL portfolio that we have is more required. Uh, just to add to what Habib said on the consumer front, yes, we are not happy uh, with that marginal degrowth which has happened. If you look at uh, on the flip side, on the wholesale bank side, which we even earlier mentioned, that corporate and institutional banking, we don't want them to grow as fast as they were doing in the past. So we have kind of slowed down in the growth in terms of uh, corporate and institutional banking. But the mid-market segment, which is the commercial banking department or division, uh, that is where within the of banking, the further growth potential is there, and we want them to grow further. MSME is another area where we want to grow. The focus is very much there. Uh, it may sound repetitive to many of you. We have been telling that we have been creating the ground and platform of the infrastructure for us in terms of system, process, and people. That is being laid down, and for this year H1, we have seen very significant uh, business volume coming in in the MSME side, and especially from the S uh, segment, and that is going to remain our key focus area. Consumer, as I've mentioned, uh, that is one area where we needed to kind of look at the profitability as compared to our peers. Uh, we don't want to get into a price war with uh, our peers, but we have a different strategy. I mean, for the consumer business, for the first H1, we are more focused in gathering the deposits than uh, lending it out there and not getting it back. But now with the laid down uh, process and platform that we have, and we are also pushing in uh, to the employee banking area, uh, we have been able to generate more employee banking business uh, from our wholesale bank customers. And that is where for the H2, as well as going forward, we are expecting some strong growth coming in from the consumer space in Northern and Boston as well. Right. 
uh, on import business, uh, the group is 21% versus uh, 2018. And, and uh, the mainly uh, import business consists of CNI, we have a CBD. Uh, you are seeing 30% growth on CNI, we have almost 4% growth in, in, in CBD. Most important thing is that, as you know, the import side of Bangladesh is quite significant, and Prime Bank is the proud bank, which has uh, around 4% of total market share on, on this import business. Uh, export has gone up by uh, 6%. Uh, CNI we have gone up by 30%. CBD is almost flat. Uh, MSP has come down a little bit because of what's what what I said that we are putting more focus on small and medium uh, uh, small enterprise. And then uh, the other other good, good thing is that uh, the prime bank's market share on export is quite significant, which is around five percent of total uh, total export of the country. Uh, remittance we have we have uh, I think we have a significant progress uh, compared to last year. Uh, we had forty two percent growth in ASO two thousand nineteen, and uh, if you compare the last couple of years from 2014, 15, 16, 17, 19, 2019 is going to be a year uh, when we'll be exceeding probably the history in prime banks. Uh, 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 journey from the inception, uh, we'll be able to make the highest amount of business, I think, in the year uh, 2019. I just want to add one point here if you just go to the previous slide. I mean, uh, from our level, from our management level, we are not 100% happy as yet with the growth that we have raised on the export side. And we all know that it's not only us, all our peers are also striving their best uh, to capture as much as uh, possible uh, from that wallet. Uh, we are seeing uh, growth of the corporate institutional banking for about 13%. Commercial banking, the dip that we have seen in this H1 2019 is a temporary phenomenon because we know the pipeline is very much there, which is going to register. It takes a bit of time. MSME, uh, the reason why you see a dip both on the import side as well as on the export side, because we are kind of shifting our focus from the AB business to the S business. So when we talk about S business, the trade uh, is not an integral part of that. And that is the reason, and that's again a part of the deliberate strategy. But obviously, as a whole, we're looking at uh, to finish the year with a double digit growth, definitely on the pan bank export side. And on the remittance side, as Habib just mentioned, it has been phenomenal. We're very happy for the way we have been able to capture the wallet share uh, in, in terms of remittance. Uh, thanks to our subsidiaries, our good friends uh, outside Bangladesh, where we have direct representation, as well as thanks to all our stakeholders, our partners uh, from different nooks and corners of the globe, where uh, we are trying to gather the uh, NRB remittances back home. And I'll just add one thing that very soon, as a part of the holistic strategy of the bank, uh, as we are all going digital uh, in many ways, uh, we are going to introduce uh, app-based remittance service for all the enemies all around uh, all around the world. So that is definitely going to ease out and make it more convenient for our enemies to send remittances home. And we have signed up uh, partnership or alliances with many of the MFSs all around the country here as well to reach out to the nooks and corners and uh, give the money to the other beneficiaries. Yeah. Um, uh, on capital side, as you know, uh, prime Bank's current uh, capital adequacy ratio is 15.68%, uh, which is, in our understanding, the highest in the, in the industry. Uh, and uh, out of this 15.68%, uh, uh, our trend on capital is almost 10%. And, and uh, we should be proud of it. And we have a very clear strategy uh, to maintain this kind of uh, capital base moving forward. It clearly indicates that we have lots of, lots of space to, to grow our debit book when uh, many of the peer banks are struggling with this capital base. Uh, so I think, thank you so much, and that's 
from, from our side. Um, Before we move on to the question and answer session, I just want to stick for a few more uh, seconds on this slide of the capital because I just want to reiterate for all our stakeholders as well as our customers uh, primarily that this is one of the major areas that I'm sure you all are going to ponder upon. Uh, the highest capital efficiency ratio in the market. Uh, this is something that, again, I'm sure will add to your level of confidence that Prime Bank is ready with the highest capital efficiency ratio to support you in all your uh, ventures and uh, going forward. So this is something that we as a bank are very proud of. And uh, this, is area, this is one area where we are going to uh, maintain uh, the ratio as much as possible. Now, thank you very much, Habib, for taking us through the financials. Uh, before we move on to the question and answers, I just want to give you a summary of H1 as well as Pan Bank, what we have been doing. Uh, if many of you would recall that over the last couple of years, uh, especially since the end of 2017, when we declared our vision for the bank uh, to grow in which areas and how to grow and where we are going to work on, uh, we mentioned about a couple of things. I just want to update you all on all those areas, how we have been progressing. You've seen the numbers, and these numbers have not been uh, coming from the sky. It has been possible, as I have reiterated earlier, that it has been possible by the collective effort of all the members of the family uh, from within the prime bank and doing the things that we have been trying to do over the last week in the past three years. Now, if I touch upon a couple of areas, one area where we have been touching on very significantly is the business process reengineering. And business process reengineering is something which is going to lay the foundation of the, uh, the pillars for our growth in many ways. Uh, when Habib spoke about the consumer banking, when Habib spoke about the CASA uh, strategy, how to increase or how to enhance the CASA accounts and everything, uh, we wanted to create a pleasant journey for the bank, uh, for the customers of the bank. So we started off with the customer onboarding to all the touch points where the customers are going to interact with. The journey has begun. The journey is still ongoing, and our BPR process is very much ongoing, and we are proud to tell you that we are going to continue with this process or this journey for the next one year at least. And one more thing that I want to add here is that unlike many others in the market, we just don't want to beat our drums and just want to join the bandwagon and say that we are going to be a digital bank. We are looking at the spheres of the bank, we are looking at the segments of the bank as in where we need to digitize and as much as we need to digitize. The good thing that has happened in H1 of 2019, the operating expenses we could control. We could spend not as a thrifty, but we could spend only where it is sensibly required to spend. And we have been able to control the expenditures as in where it is not required. And that has given a boost to the bottom line of the bank. And that is again going to continue. Alongside with the BPR process, we are very much focused on the digital transformation of the bank, as I mentioned. And what we have done, uh, we have created a team within the bank uh, who is leading the work as a working group. And it's a very small working group consisting of few of the uh, divisional heads, and this team is currently being led by our DMV and CFO, Habibur Rahman Chaudhary himself. And we are looking at different solutions. Uh, we are talking to fintech partners, we are talking to different bodies, we are talking to different banks altogether internationally. And we are creating the platform where the customer's journey with Prime Bank should be of ease and convenience, as I say. And anything and everything that they do they will feed the touch of digital, digitization there. Uh, we are not going to announce and we are not going to see the thunders uh, for the future and we are not going to tell them what we are going to do exactly, but we can tell you the initial footstep that we had uh, during the first quarter, we have got 
very good response of the introduction of the first digital savings account in the country. When the country wants to go digital, when our Honorable Prime Minister announced the Digital Bangladesh Initiative, uh, from the financial industry side, we wanted to hand in hand, in conjunction with that strategy, we wanted to introduce the first digital savings account. And the response we have received is very good. And we are going to enhance the features of that account and the features of that proposition of that service. And alongside that, in many other areas of the products and services that we currently offer, we want to enhance more and more going forward. Other area of the bank uh, I want to touch on is the business strategy. The business strategy is uh, going to remain unchanged. Our wholesale bank is going to remain uh, the strongest part of the bank. Currently, they are the majority of the bank. We want to degrow a bit, as we uh, say, in the corporate and institutional banking. Corporate and institutional banking is focusing more now onwards on selective transactions, on selective large transactions, where we are going to underwrite and distribute further, so that that can boost our fees earning going forward. Uh, with the new inclusion in the team, uh, as I introduced Faisal, uh, he is trying to gear up the team more to create more synergy with the rest of the bank. And as we call it, I mean hand in hand, leveraging on the strength of the corporate institutional relationship we have had with most of our clients, we want to help uh, in front of our consumer and MSME business. So that synergy is going to get further stronger. On the commercial banking side, in the Wilson Bank, uh, we are going to grow it further and we are going to uh, expand our reach to the pan uh, Bangladesh or pan country basis. We are uh, already present in many of the areas of the Bangladesh and we want to you know, expand it further uh, on the commercial banking side. Consumer, as I already mentioned earlier, is one of the most focused areas, but we don't want to make any mistake in that front, but we want to keep them as the deposit generating engine for the bank. And the cost of deposit, which we showed in the financial statement earlier, that we have been able to manage our cost of deposit, and when going forward, we want to continue with that uh, lower cost of deposit, consumer is going to be our forefront in, in, in that expedition. At the same time, MSME, as we say, that the growth area is going to be the S part of uh, the MSME business. We're very happy with the growth they have registered. The new onboarding of new asset clients, new to bank clients, have been phenomenal. It has grown more than 50% in the last six months, and we want to we want to continue that uh, in the same manner. Uh, in terms of business strategies, this is going to remain as uh, we have been telling. The other area where we have been working on very strongly is the human capital. Uh, we identified one thing, the talent management is one thing where we have to focus on. And for the last one and a half year, we have introduced uh, the reward system, the performance, the quarterly performance rewards have been uh, given out. And uh, people who are doing good jobs, they have been, they have been recognized and rewarded accordingly. And that is going to come to uh, we have chosen the right people for the right job, and there is a process of work which is still undergoing. Uh, we have identified the high potential resources that we have, and we have identified the core resources we have. And we are going to continue with this process going forward as well. So human resource is something which we think is the, is the biggest asset we have. And for the success the Prime Bank have had, the last 24 plus years now, it's been possible for the people of the bank. And we are going to invest more on those people of the bank and create and get them stronger which to, to take on any challenges in the, in the future that may come in. The other area where we are focusing very strongly is the risk management. We from the bank side, we believe that the credit climate is a bit volatile. We are seeing a bit of a roller coaster ride in the market. We are seeing uh, tightened uh, scenario with regards to many of the non-banking financial institutions. Uh, so we just want to think ahead of the market. And uh, as a part of that strategy, our risk management process has been 
very enormous. We have been uh, analyzing our portfolio. We have been reviewing our credit portfolio on a, on a regular basis. We are holding monthly review of our uh, credit portfolio or the asset portfolio. We are trying to manage the details of it. We are taking strong and hard decisions as and where uh, it is required, and that is going to continue because we are going to churn our wholesale banking portfolio. We have not taken our eyes off while we are growing our business on the MSME business. We are uh, keeping very close eye to our MSME asset portfolio, the FAR, the DVDs, we are looking at it very closely. And the good news is for the analysts or for the investors in the bank that we are very much well within the acceptable. And we are going to improve further on that front. The other focus area for the bank is going to recover the legacy non-performing loan portfolio as we have. I am reassuring you again that since we reconfigured the business model, the portfolio that we have lent out, Pan Bank, be it MSME, be it commercial banking, and be it portfolio uh, of institutional banking, we have been able to maintain a very clean portfolio in that respect. Whatever non-performing loan that we are having today is from the legacy portfolio. So which tells us that our risk management process over the last three years and so have been working in, in, in the way we have wanted it to work in. The focus, as I say, is going to uh, remain very strong for the money to be uh, brought back from those non-performing portfolios. Thanks and kudos to our specialized management team. They have been able to uh, revisit uh, that portfolio as and where uh, the legal battle needs to be won. We have won the legal battles and as and when, as and where uh, any other uh, restructuring uh, could have been possible, we have been, we have been doing that as well. Uh, as a whole, these have been the tasks that we have been uh, doing over the last six months, as a matter of fact, uh, continuing with our uh, work from the last year. And we foresee a very good year end, inshallah, for 2019 as well. 29% uh, PAT growth, uh, half uh, H1 2019. Uh, if, inshallah, if all the strategies work as we uh, wanted to work and if all our four businesses are firing their ammo just the way we want them to uh, fire, then this could be uh, very well in the region of 30-40% uh, at the year end. So we want to end the year on a very happy note inshallah and we are going to remain very cautious with the portfolio and we reassure all our stakeholders that our compliance is going to remain be a strong focus area not going to compromise on the quality of our portfolio. We are going to continue with our efforts to manage our liquidity as good as we have been managing over the past one and a half years. And uh, we are going to continue to deliver the results or the PATs or the shareholders uh, return as good as we have been able to uh, provide in the last 18 months. Now over to you for the question and answers. There are a few questions on the game. I think we were experiencing a bit of technical difficulties with your uh, microphone in the initial time. So for part of it. There is one question I would want you to answer that. Why is the tax rate so high in this quarter? Uh, tax, tax rate is not uh, really high, but our uh, commission for tax is uh, uh, at a higher rate. That's because uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, if you compare it to the on 2018, uh, at that time we had a significant amount of uh, return of loan. And as you know, uh, return of loan considered as, as uh, I, I mean, for return of loan, we get tax exemptions, uh, and, and that is the main reason. The other thing is that, as you know, uh, we have been able to uh, increase our operating profit by around 
176 crore. Uh, that is the second reason uh, behind this uh, tax provision hike in uh, 2019. But tax rate is same, it's 37.5 percent. There's another question almost in the same line which says, are you expecting similar provisioning for the rest of the year as well? Uh, we are not expecting, we will start uh, maybe in the second half if the return of loan size goes up, then probably the provision of this tax will uh, uh, may come down proportionately. And just uh, on the same note, I just want to add that uh, in the year of 15, 16 and 17, we provided pretty largely and that was part of the deliberate cleaning the book strategy. Uh, so this year in the H1, even in 2018, you have seen that our provision figure had come down from the immediate past three years. And if you look at the H1 provision figure as well, it has marginally come down from the H1 2018 figure. And as we mentioned earlier too, that our total, I mean the full year provisioning, we don't expect uh, to go beyond what we had done last year. Uh, so we hope and expect that the provisioning in the H2 will remain lower than the, than the corresponding previous year. The next question is, can you maintain current mean if balance sheet is growing at industry rate? Uh, I'm pretty confident on that uh, because uh, what I already uh, explained uh, the time where uh, Manage the balance sheet very efficiently because the variables of balance sheet is uh, very much correlated. Uh, I think we have able to demonstrate that in not only uh, 19 or 18 also, we have been able to manage our uh, name very efficiently. And um, I think we will be industry and our peers on this side and we will be able to maintain this name moving forward. Just to add to what Hamid mentioned, I mean, uh, I'm just answering to the question. I mean, we are not benchmarking our growth rate with the industry rate because we are very conscious of the fact that the industry itself is possibly growing at a higher rate than us, and especially in terms of loans and advances. And that's a part of the conscious strategy that we have taken that we don't want to have aggressive lending growth. Uh, we want to be very cautious with regards to the quality of the asset, and that will, that will continue going forward as well. Uh, the other question. Is corporate deposit played a big role to the past year? You want to make a uh, comment on that? Actually, the base of corporate uh, deposit is not very really yeah. high. Yeah. So, in terms of percentage, if you look at uh, 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 corporate deposit, has played a wider role. But what I say is that uh, out of total deposit book, more than 65% is our consumer book. So, I, th I think we are fine on that part. And what I say is, Yes, we understand that our process has to increase moving forward, and that for that, uh, it will not uh, uh, come in short period of time. We uh, are taking a long term strategy in, in terms of uh, technology, in terms of people, or, or, or driver, as what driver has said, in terms of process engineering. And uh, when we can see all this together, I think we will be able to provide a, 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 I mean, I mean, I'm happy. Uh, banking service experience to our customer providing uh, embedded kind of banking service and then I think uh, it will do even better. The next question is are depositors becoming more aware post PLFS liquidation? Uh, I think I already touched on that issue before in one of my statements during the financial presentation of Hadith and I just want to reiterate that point of time. Uh, I understand where it is coming from, from the recent, very recent liquidation notice given by one of the MBFIs. Uh, and I totally agree with the comment uh, which has come from whoever has asked that question, is that the depositors are more aware now about where to put their money in. And that is kind of rewarding for banks like ours, especially we take pride at our time bank. Uh, we have seen almost 90% of our customers renewing their account deposits with us despite the fact that our interest rates have not been uh, matching, uh, equally matching to the peers uh, in, in the industry. And uh, I'm sure going forward, the depositors are going to be more aware of uh, choosing where to put their hard-earned money, uh, especially with the retail investors or the retail uh, depositors. 
and uh, definitely prime bank with a strong capital base, with a very strong capital adequacy ratio, and with the quality and consistent uh, portfolio will be the destination point for them. The other question, there's a statement, there's a comment that would say consumer banking has a lot of things to do in case of both deposits and loan. Yes, we agree with that, uh, as we mentioned, that consumer banking has a lot to do, and definitely we will be continuing to do uh, a lot there. Uh, just to remind you, or just to take you through that, uh, with 146 branches distribution set up, uh, where branch banking used to be the forte for the, those 146 branches, it's not very easy to just reconfigure and uh, change the strategy and get going. So we have been uh, busy uh, over the last 18 months in terms of laying down the process, the platform, and reconfiguration of that, and getting our people ready uh, in, in those branch distribution network to, to go and do the business in the way we want them, in the change uh, perspective. So now, the results that we are seeing over the last quarter on a quarter basis are uh, very encouraging. We're seeing the CASA deposits uh, growing, almost 35-40% uh, new CASA accounts uh, growth that we are seeing. Uh, definitely, as you say, that there is a lot more to do. But yes, we are doing, and in the H2 and onwards, you'll be seeing more uh, happening in that front. The next question is, why are you increasing exposure in government securities when you can lend them? via loan book or interbank. Can you comment on that? Yeah, uh, actually our, uh, I'm sure you have uh, got this number from our balance sheet. Our investment in present we bought has increased in the last uh, three, four days of the, of the June end. That's why it moves very, very hard and hard investment in present we bought. But if you compare with the, uh, we have said that this is, is not, we have compared with uh, interbank rent, we do rent, you know that interbank rent is, is around 4 percent, 3 percent. So I think I think uh, it's better to invest in uh, treasury bills instead of putting too much interest from the short bank. And we also understand that we are a PD bank, uh, we can make investment of the revenue. That's a regular The next question do you expect term deposit? Term deposit rates to come down in H2. That's one of the very favorite subjects of Habib, so I will let him comment on that. Uh, I'm taking uh, this question is specific to Prime Bank, not the term deposit in the industry. Uh, I think in Prime Bank, term uh, deposit will be flat, uh, whatever they will have at the moment, it will be uh, like this. Uh, uh, it may come down slightly, but we don't see any significant jump on this. Yeah. I'll just add to what you said. I mean, we all are aware that uh, the collective effort from the banking industry is ongoing with regards to reducing the cost of deposit and then passing on that benefit to the borrowers. Uh, and we are no exception to that. Uh, we are trying our level best, we are striving, and we are very hopeful that in the very nearest future we'll be able to comply with that and. Uh, pass on the benefits to our borrowers as well. Because overall, pan banking industry where uh, the liquidity is under a bit of strain, uh, it is a bit difficult to do it overnight, but our collective effort is ongoing and prime, from Prime Bank we are reassuring that we will continue with that. The next question is, did you take any benefits from new relaxed NPM reclassification? And also, will there be any rescheduling under large loan restructuring? Yeah. Uh, let me be very transparent with you on this, to answer these questions. Yes, uh, because of this new classification uh, rule, uh, it has added around um, uh, 15 crore property profit uh, in, in half year 2019. And I think this is one up, and yes, uh, that, is, that is in our operating plan. Yep. So we have not seen any uh, rescheduling of under the large loan restructuring as yet uh, from within our portfolio. 
And uh, just to add to what Habib said, that yes, we have taken a benefit of 15 crore uh, in our H1 operating profit, but we, at the same time, not to be mean or not to look at it in any other way, our core business have been growing very steadily and significantly over the last uh, six months, and which has been the main uh, driving force in terms of the rise in operating profit as well as in PSG. What are the challenges for banks for H2 2019 and 2020, according to you? You want to go first? Uh, as we all understand that uh, non profit loan is the, is the uh, and, and critical issues in the banking industry at the moment. Uh, I think that is the only uh, I mean, I mean, major challenge that we in the industry. It's not only time then, but uh, from the bank side, uh, as you know, as the bank has gone through consolidation process in the uh, last couple of years, uh, I think we are ready for that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the challenge. In my words, I definitely agree with uh, what Habib just mentioned. Uh, non performing loan management is going to remain as one of the key challenges. At the same time, I think liquidity, both in terms of local taka as well as foreign currency. Liquidity is going to be name of the game for uh, next 18 to 24 months. And uh, that is where how well we manage our liquidity, how well we manage our ALM uh, is going to determine uh, the bottom line for any of the financial institutions. Because it's very easy to go and spend a lot of money for new initiatives and stuff, but we need to look at the bottom line factor for that, we need to look at the return for that, and we all know that there is a very limited pool out there. And we have to be very creative going forward. I mean, the very conventional method as we have been growing, I'm, I'm talking fan banking industry, that is not going to be the same for going forward. So we want to be more creative in, in managing the liquidity or gathering more liquidity is going to be coming out as a winner. The next question I believe is, can you please shed some light on current liquidity what do you expect for H2 2019? I think we have already answered that question. The current liquidity condition for our bank, for Prime Bank, we are alhamdulillah in a very comfortable uh, position and we expect and hope that we will continue with that because all the signs that we see on the wall are good for us as a bank. Uh, and H2 2019, we don't foresee any issues in terms of liquidity for the bank. Uh, if your question was with regards to the industry, I think I've already, uh, we both have already uh, commented on that. The next question, do you have any plan to launch agent banking? Uh, yes, we do have plans uh, of launching agent banking. We have already uh, created, we have already started creating the platform. Uh, we are laying down the processes. Uh, one thing I can reassure you on behalf of the bank is that we are not going to follow the model that our peers have uh, followed in the past. We are going to come with a very digitized and a little more conventional solution to the market. And uh, we hope to hit the market with this within the year 2019, inshallah. The next question is, what is your projection for deposit rate in H2? I think we have already uh, commented on that. The next question, if the borrowing from banks remain at present high level, do you think it will affect prime negatively? If the government borrowing from banks remain at present high level, do you think it will affect prime negatively? Abhi, do you want to take that? Uh, this is an equitable question. Uh, I think, uh, no, it will not uh, affect prime very negatively because, uh, as you know, our because it's on operating deposit. On the other hand, uh, we are going for quality <coughs> asset growth only. So even if government uh, borrows from the banks, uh, as you know, we are maintaining our liquidity. Uh, uh, we are maintaining uh, really very much liquidity uh, liquid positions. So I don't think it will be impacted significantly negatively uh, us. Another question, the effective tax rate is close to 60% this quarter. Will this come down? Uh, we expect that it will, it will come down in the future because what I 
already have mentioned that this is because uh, because of in, in this this half year we don't have uh, that much uh, income from comparing to last year. Uh, we did that as uh, we are uh, going through the constitution process. We are cleaning our book. Uh, some more people don't need to come in the future, and then uh, this liquidity should come down in case to 2019. Are there uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Would you refresh that? Any other questions? I think uh, we have no further questions at the moment uh, to be webcast. Uh, thank you so much to all the stakeholders who have been patiently listening to us for the last past one hour now. Uh, we have been able to meet the objective. We wanted to finish it within an hour. I, I think we just uh, uh, came to an hour now. So thank you very much to everyone and we hope and pray that our quest continues and uh, in the second half uh, the results will be much better than what we have seen in H1 and uh, it's only going to get better because we always say within the bank that the best is yet to come and uh, we expect to see you soon in the next quarter. Thank you so much. Thank you.